Let's see what uh, what uh, what Woj had to say about Mitch and uh, contract talks. For the Knicks, Greeny, the, the looming free agency of their 23-year-old starting center, Mitchell Robinson, it's a concern for New York. Now, they've had talks throughout the season with his agent, Thad Fouché, about an extension. The Knicks can pay Robinson under the collective bargaining agreement four years and upwards of $48 million before June 30th. They've not reached an agreement on that, and it's unclear that they will before free agency when Robinson will be unrestricted. Now the Knicks can pay him more money in summer free agency, but this has been one of their real development stories, a second round pick in 2018. You know, this year he's having his best season, almost nine rebounds a game, a block and a half, and he's leading the league in field goal percentage. Prior to June 30th, the Knicks can extend Mitch uh, to as high of a contract as four years, $48 million. So $12 million a year, which will be great. But now, according to Ian Begley's article today on uh, SNY.TV, uh, the Knicks and Mitch's agent, Thad Fusher of Washington Media Group, uh, they're far apart on those talks. So it doesn't look like Mitch is intending to take that deal it looks like he will go into potentially unrestricted free agency, man. Go past that June 30th deadline. And, uh, you know, Knicks are at risk of losing the block nest monster for nothing. So definitely going to be worth watching. Now, over the course of the past season, you know, Mitch has been dropping little tidbits here and there about wanting to see his role expand. You know, he's been on his TikTok, on his IG you know, making statements, he, he's putting his plus minus out there to show his impact on the team. The other day, just recently, he showed uh, Miles Plumley of the Charlotte Hornets getting into his bag with a little crossover down the lane. And, and Mitch talking about, you know, uh, basically, you know, he's got the green light. So Mitch is looking for the green light here. And on Twitter, he got into an exchange as uh, this, this Twitter fan, Knicks Nation, called him out, says all for re-signing Mitch. But if he's pushing for more money, you explore signing trades with him. There's a reason why he's pushing the narrative that the coach is holding him back. He's just trying to get paid. Show us more of this offensive game you claim you have. And then Mitch clapped back. He says, everyone knows when everybody gets involved in the ball movement and everyone touching the ball, that energy and effort goes to another level. Uh, let me ask you this and be 100% with your answer. How would you feel just running up and down the court for 48 minutes, even for 20 minutes? He which said, is, uh, which is such a Mitch tweet. <laughs> yeah, got it. But look, I'll deeply appreciate it if I could watch TikTok without being mentioned in a tweet. It kills my <laughs> vibe. <laughs> Thanks and have a good one. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, the fact that they're far apart doesn't really shock me from like an agent standpoint and a front office standpoint. You know, they're still in the middle of the season. Of course, the team, I'm sure the Knicks would want to get this done before he hits free agency after June 30th. You know, there's been there's been a lot of numbers running around. Uh, who was it? Sean uh, Devaney of uh, Heavy.com came out with a report saying that he spoke to an NBA GM and he expected if Mitch were to go into the market, he would get a three year deal, 33 million. Um, so that kind of gives you an idea of where Mitch's value is as as a center somewhere along Robert Williams, the time war for the Celtics. You know, and that's what I'm kind of expecting for for Mitch too. And you look at Mitch, sure he's shown some uh, improvement this season. He's still a little raw in some areas. You could still see that he needs to, you know, improve on setting screens. Uh, he could still improve on boxing out. Uh, you could still see that he needs more of an offense, post moves, face up games, something, uh, just something more than just being a lob threat. Um, but that's where all these conversations are coming in makes sense why the team's waiting to see how he finished this season does he still make more improvements before you want to give him that money so it does it makes sense and this could also just be a negotiating standpoint too for the agent because you know like one the agent's going to take care of himself like take care of mitch i should say but he also wants to make sure mitch gets the best deal because he also gets a better deal too he gets right. a piece of that whatever contract that mitch gets so right. of course he's going to try to market his uh, client to be the best that he can be like what have we seen from mitch to say okay you are deserving of like the five-year 55 million dollar deal you know outside mm -hmm. of just like a so like he's having i'd say an okay to solid season this year there's been ups and downs but his play has also indicated on 
how well the entire team is doing as well. Like if the if the ball movement's not there, if he doesn't have a point guard either to really get him activated for lobs, like there's like he can't he can only do so much. He doesn't have, you know, the offensive game, which throwing it back to Mitch, he needs to develop that if he wants to even get more touches too. So it's okay. It goes both ways. Hey, I don't know, man. I'm on the fence on Mitch, man. Oh, I'm on the fence, man, bro. bro. I'm on the fence. Wow. Wow. I'm on the fence. For four, for 48 million, you, you can, on the fence? This whole Jericho Sims playing now, you know, I know that people are saying, you know, no, Noel is hurt, but Taj is there. If you can make the case, Tibbs would rather play Taj over Noel. That's that's his boy. This this all of a sudden like let's because I, I still find it strange that how, Jericho Sims is playing all of a sudden, but McBride is still not. Like they're still we're, like we're we're yeah. still gonna wait on on a guy that we don't have a plan. Like we don't have a point guard. We don't have an option. Technically, McBride you could say is the only quote unquote point guard that could play. But then we're gonna play Sims when we technically still have Taj there, and then you got that. You have this uh, the report that they're far apart. You see Woj saying that this is something the Knicks have been at it for the whole season. Yeah. You know, you know, Mitch with these tweets, Mitch has been doing a lot of subs about his role. Um, I don't know, man. Like, this is going to be interesting. This is going to be interesting. going to be very interesting. And, you know, the Knicks front office has to look at it also. I don't know from a Tom Thibodeau stand. I don't know that Tom Thibodeau's opinion at this point holds as much weight because I don't think Thibodeau is going to be part of your future. So is this something that maybe they kind of put Johnny Bryant, you know, in the, in the, in the office quietly, they ask him what he thinks. Like this is, this is going to be interesting. And if we, you cannot lose him for nothing, man. That's my thing, bro. That's, That's my thing. thing. Remember like, when there were the rumors that we could have traded up and the Warriors wanted Mitch yeah, and we didn't want to do Wiseman, it. To go get Wiseman. You know what um, I mean? Like you cannot, and that's what that's what I'm saying. Now yeah. the Knicks are cornered because at this point, signing trade possibilities, what you're getting, a few second round picks. Like what what are you really getting? I don't think the twelve. I don't think four for forty eight is that bad. When you look at the center salaries around the league, I really don't think it's that bad. And if they didn't do a boneheaded deal with Noel, it would be even better. You know what I'm saying? The Noel thing made no sense. For a backup center that was extremely limited. I think with Mitch, you know, a lot of people, yes, he does need some sort of package. But it's unrealistic. He's a rim runner. You know, yes, the Time Lord has a little bit better arsenal than him. But I think Mitch can get there. I think he can get there. And and look, he's been operating in one of the worst offenses in the NBA over the, since he's been here. With no point guard. Absolutely no point guard or consistent playmaker to get him involved. I think he's playing it right. I think he's saying all the right things. I can do more. I want the green line. I want a bigger role. He's playing it right. He's he's doing business the right way. The agent is doing business the right way. I wouldn't expect him being on his what sixth agent since he's been in the league to just settle for that for that deal, right? They're gonna take it all the way as they should. Um, but I still think for that amount of money, I I would do it. 